Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one part of a series of videos on chemistry and biochemistry, overviewing solutions, acids, and bases. The picture here shows some common household substances that are acids and bases. This video will describe what solutions are, give some common vocabulary, define what acids and bases are, and describe how the pH scale measures acids and bases. In another video, I discussed molecules and compounds. In this video, we'll be discussing mixtures. The terms have some things in common, but there are some very important distinctions worth pointing out. One of the major differences between mixtures and molecules is that molecules involve fixed proportions while mixtures do not. Carbon dioxide, for example, CO2, is a molecule in a compound, since it contains two atoms of different types. There are always, however, two atoms of oxygen for every one atom of carbon. Salt water would be an example of a mixture. It doesn't have fixed proportions. You could dissolve 2 grams of salt into a liter of water, or you could dissolve 20 grams of salt into that same liter of water. The proportions and mixtures are not fixed. The picture on the bottom of this slide helps illustrate the difference between mixtures, molecules, and compounds. In each of these boxes, different elements are represented by different colored spheres. Box A would be an example of a mixture. There are two different types of molecules, represented by two or more atoms stuck together, in the box. The amount of one of these molecules relative to the other could be increased or decreased. You could, for example, double the number of red spheres, and the ratio of the elements would change. Boxes B and C contain molecules of the same type, and there are fixed proportions of the atoms. They are pure substances. In B, there are always two red spheres connected together. In C, there is always one red sphere connected to one blue sphere, and this can't be changed. Box C contains a compound because there are two different types of atoms in fixed proportions. There are three different types of mixtures that we'll talk about now. Suspensions, colloids, and solutions. Suspensions are made up of large particles, and a key characteristic is that they settle out over time. If you were to place sand in water and stir it up, it would initially look pretty uniformly mixed. But given a few seconds or minutes, depending on the sand, all of the sand would settle to the bottom of the cup. Colloids can be identified by what is called the Tyndall effect. If you were to shine a laser pointer through a colloid, the medium-sized particles in that colloid would scatter light. Milk is an example of a substance that is a colloid. Solutions, the final type of mixture that we'll be discussing, is the topic of discussion for this video. And it, they are made up of smaller particles. Uh, solutions do not scatter light, and they don't settle out over time. An example of a solution would be glucose, which is a type of sugar dissolved in water. The chart at the bottom of this slide outlines some of the most important distinguishing characteristics between these different types of mixtures, solutions, suspensions, and colloids. There are two different components that make up a solution, a solvent, or what something is dissolved in, and the solute, or the substance that is dissolved. For most of our purposes this year, there will be a solid dissolved inside a liquid. The previous slide suggested an example of this, where sugar was dissolved in water. In this case, sugar would be the solute, and the water would act as a solvent. Water is sometimes referred to as the universal solvent because it sol dissolves so many different things and is very frequently used as a solvent. The picture to the right shows that if you add a solvent and solute together, you form a solution. Again, in mixtures, the amount of solute can be varied because they are not in fixed proportions. The concentration of a solution is a measure of how much solute or stuff is dissolved in a given amount of solution. Concentration can be measured in a host of different ways, but one that we'll talk about in a separate video is molarity. Solutions can be described as saturated or unsaturated. If a solution is saturated, that means that it contains or has dissolved as much solute as is possible in the solution. If any more solute would add it, it would not dissolve, it would just settle to the bottom of the container. Unsaturated solutions are not saturated or they're not maxed in the amount of solute that could potentially be added. The picture to the right shows an unsaturated solution on top. If you dissolve 30 grams of NaCl or sodium chloride table salt and it all disappeared when you added it, more could be mixed in. The bottom image shows that if 40 grams of sodium chloride were added to the same amount of water, 
Most of the solute would dissolve, but some of it might settle to the bottom. Since no more could be dissolved under these conditions, the solution is referred to as saturated. Acids and bases are types of solutions that will be discussed over the next couple slides. There are a number of different ways to describe materials as acids or bases. One way that you can do so is by looking at the concentration of two different types of ions, hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. Solutions that have more hydronium ions than hydroxide ions are referred to as acidic, while solutions that have more hydroxide ions than hydronium ions are called bases. Solutions that have an equal number of both are referred to as neutral. A picture showing the structure of hydronium and hydroxide ions is shown on the right. The pH scale is a measure of describing how acidic or basic a solution is. The pH scale usually ranges from 0 to 14, and substances with a pH of less than 7 are called acids, and substances with a pH of greater than 7 are called bases. Again, if a solution has a pH of exactly 7, it would be referred to as neutral. This slide describes pH as a logarithmic measurement of the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide ions. What this means is that if the pH value of a substance changes by 1, that the relative concentration of hydronium or hydroxide ions changes by a factor of 10. This scale is used because of the drastic differences in concentration of these ions across the pH scale. Other examples of logarithmic measurements would include the Richter scale for earthquakes and the decibel scale for sound. The pH scale to the right shows the relative quantities of hydronium and hydroxide ions as well as some different substances that you might be familiar with and where they fall on the pH scale. There is a separate video that describes the mathematics of acids, bases, and the pH scale. That is the end of this video summarizing solutions, acids, and bases. If you're interested in learning about other chemistry or biochemistry concepts as they relate to biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.